Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining the talk. Uh, my name is Shishri Pokhil. Uh, I work for ON24. Um, talking about ON24, we are a webcasting company. We do lots of uh, live and on-demand webcasting. And um, we are located in San Francisco um, headquarters. Um, uh, about myself, um, I've been working with uh, ON24 since uh, six years now. Uh, my per personal uh, work duty is uh, uh, for uh, audio video streaming side on the, on the company itself. Um, I get uh, used to with AV, AV streaming when I was working on 24. Um, the thing that I wanted to uh, present today is about uh, the AV streaming from single source to uh, multiple destination. And I came across this uh, issue when I was uh, gaming one day, and I want to stream my uh, uh, game stream to not only one app platform, but different platform. As we say, uh, I want to do it on a Facebook, and I want to do it on a YouTube at the same time. Uh, but there was an application out there, but uh, it didn't uh, fulfill what I was uh, looking for. So I started uh, uh, working on it. And uh, this is not a full application. This is a demo for it, uh, what can be done in the future. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that. So um, uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk mostly about the uh, framework that we use for G streaming uh, with Python. Sorry, with uh, with streaming for the Python, which is called G Streamer. Anyone in the room has used G Streamer in the past? We get a couple hands. Um, so we'll be talking about G objects, um, very high level. Um, and then the G Streamer, some. Uh, 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 GTK, uh, and then we'll dive into the uh, uh, Python code. So as I said, we'll uh, go with GStreamer, GLIF, GObject, by GObject, GTK example, and then uh, G, uh, GST with CLI and GST Python. So uh, talking about the GStreamer, uh, so GStreamer is built with, uh, with the genome uh, framework, which is basically a, a, a GNU network object-oriented model environment. Um, it's a it's a genome desktop environment, and GStreamer was a part of multimedia within that uh, environment. Uh, genome use, uh, uses the uh, library, which is uh, GLib and GObjects. Um, these are the uh, underneath library used for the genome project, which is also inherited by the uh, uh, GStreamer. So GStreamer is built on top of uh, GLib and GObjects. But again, these are uh, G objects uh, code, but uh, we want to use G streamer in Python. So there is something called uh, G object introspection, which is GI. This is a middle layer between the uh, Python code and the G object interface, where the Python code will be in, uh, converted uh, into the uh, G object code, meaning the G object libraries references can be ported over to the Python code. So in order to have a G object introspection, we need to have a PyG object, which is a Python module for the G object, and uh, which is, comes with the Python uh, G object introspection. And since we are talking with PyGST, we, uh, sorry, Py, uh, GStreamer, we need to install PyGST because it has the uh, type lib and the library associated with it. Uh, I'll talk about the type lib and the library, what it is in the next, next slide. So you can think of this way. So if our application Python is written in Python, which inherits the uh, classes and the objects from PyG objects. The PyG objects uh, has a different uh, libraries associated with it, which is lib uh, GI repository, which, uh, which basically uh, communicates with libgtk in this case and the gtk type lib to give the dynamic interface for the Python. So in our case, if you are using GStreamer, it will be, everything would be same, Till lib GI repository, then the GI repository, which is a, a C code for the Py, uh, sorry C code for the G object, that will be communicating with lib GST in our case, and then the GTK 1.0 type lib. So these are the dynamic uh, libraries uh, that um, Py G object or the G object will be communicating with uh, uh, communicating with the uh, in the process. So this is a very fair example of uh, in Python how uh, a GTK is uh, GTK GTK code is written. So in this example, if you see, uh, the first thing is uh, 
we need to import a GI. So GI here is from the previous slide, which is a, a G object introspection, and uh, which requires to uh, import with a GTK version, which version we want to include. Then comes with the actual uh, import of GTK, and uh, this is a uh, uh, code flow for the uh, GTK uh, window to open. So this is basically a simple code that I wrote just to make an explanation of how a Py uh, G object is imported on a plain Python code and to uh, and executes. So if we look at that one, uh, probably here. So this is the same example code that uh, I had it there. So if I run it, I don't think I can make it bigger in size in the code. It's exact, actually a slide that I already showed earlier, right? It's just a code I'm running right now. So if I ran this code, it's already running, but uh, where's the window? I think it came over here. I'm running the wrong one. So here's the window, the Pi with the Pi GTK. So the purpose I brought this window over here is um, since we are going to work with GStreamer in a, in a later slide, uh, it would be a good idea to have the controls that related to a GStreamer to be built with a GTK. Because since these two libraries are built on top of a G object, it will go uh, together properly. Uh, so let me close this one. Or else we have other uh, other GUI interface also like Qt for Python and other stuff. Okay, so yeah. So now talking about GStreamer. Um, so GStreamer is a uh, tool for creating a uh, for sharing a media application. So if you look at a GStreamer, the core of it, because this is a very big topic to discuss, so I'm, I want to talk very high level. So the middle part is the core of GStreamer, how the framework works. Um, so it consists of a, it's consists of a Python architecture, meaning it has uh, uh, so-called elements associated with it. Each element has to be linked with its neighbor elements. Um, each element has uh, either one sync, or one sync, one uh, source, or uh, one sync, multiple source, or multiple source, or multiple syncs. So when I say about syncs and source, uh, syncs is somewhere where the data is been um, pushed or pulled from. Source is something where data is been sent out, uh, sent out to. So in this slide, the all the uh, and it's probably probably hard to see, but all the blue icons over there, the right uh, left part of it are the sync. All the right part within the box are the source. I have other slides that I'll, I'll show in detail, but that's how it is. So as a as a whole framework itself. It comes up under the L, uh, LGPL license, which is free to use with any other applications. And uh, its architecture, as I said, is um, a pipeline architecture which has to be linked with each other and also a plugin architecture, which means uh, we can have the um, plugin being uh, created and connect to the uh, GStreamer frame, uh, frame uh, code framework directly. What, what I mean to say about that, saying that is, um, so if, let's say, um, tomorrow there is some, any codec that's came up to the, on the market or any new protocol that's been announced in the market, we can simply write the plugin for that and then uh, link with the GStreamer framework uh, to accomplish what we wanted it to do. So it supports different protocols. If you, are, if you want to change the protocols from one, uh, one protocol to another protocol, different sources, different codecs, um, and it has more than 250 plugins and so forth. Um, so with the, talking about GStreamer tool, these are the built-in tools that uh, it has it. Um, so not only for streaming, GStreamer is also used for uh, uh, video editing services as open source. Um, I don't know how much percentage of the people they use it, but uh, they have used, uh, used it. Um, so another feature of the GStreamer is a mechanism for synchronization, which I mean by that is, let's say if we have a two different stream coming uh, from two different locations, but we want to um, merge it at a at a one third location, 
but we want to synchronize the timestamp, meaning the uh, audio video synchronization and the timestamp has to be synchronized. So we, what we can do is we can use some uh, uh, networking protocol in all of these three different locations, and then with the help of that, we can uh, synchronize the uh, stream the way we want it. Um, so lastly, uh, to get the GStreamer with the uh, with the Python project, there are two ways uh, that I, I would recommend to do it, either with the server or GST build. Um, this provides uh, the these are the these are from the source code from the GStreamer where you can uh, pre compile you can uh, compile it and install the uh, all the necessary libraries for either Linux, Mac, or Windows, and also uh, uh, install the Python bindings for it, which is basically um, uh, Python G objects, uh, uh, Python in, uh, introspection, and everything because they have everything um, on the on these two packages. I have the link at the last that will give you uh, where to get more information about the server or the GST build. So uh, um, talking about the pipeline here. So first, how the GStreamer works is uh, GStreamer has this pipeline where every uh, element, if you look at that. Uh, block is an element, uh, has a source, because this is a file source, it, it will have only one thing, that's source, which is linked with OGG demoxer, which is basically getting a OGG uh, codec data and demoxing it into a raw data, which goes to the sink, then sink, then the OGG demoxer has a source, which goes to the sinks of a verbase decoder, and finally it goes out to the audio output. So events can go in between any elements within the pipeline, queries can go between either in any side of the pipeline, meaning it, it can flow from uh, source to sync or sync to source. And also, the uh, masses uh, can come and flow from the bus as well. So bus will, every element will uh, uh, publish its masses on the bus. Um, so from the application point of view, when we're building it, uh, you can, we can send the events and query it directly to the element, and also receive the masses directly from the element to the, to the application. Um, so this line here, so this, is a, this was for a one-to-one -one where the, um, uh, the say element has only one uh, source, but here this is for a multiple source. So here we have the file source. The file source has been demoxed into a two-part, because uh, when you are talking about audio video, it will, they will, it will have um, audio part and the video part. So uh, the source one will have either audio, or source two will have either video or audio but it, it will spit out the audio video. In, also in some cases, if it has a text um, or the subtitle, it will spit out the subtitle as well. So then it can be multiple, uh, multiple source at a time. So after spitting its, uh, its source, we are doing a, a, a Borbis decoder and Tora decoder for audio and video and sending it to audio, audio sync and the video sync element. So again, if you look at here, the uh, sync element has no source because it's a sync. Which is which is a, which is about it's only uh, playing it out on the uh, uh, on the device or capturing it on a file or sending it to some other protocol or something depending upon the what kind of sync we have used. So this is a very this is a simple example of command line without using Python. So if you have installed GStreamer and you want to start, try it out to see okay how to test out whether the installation worked properly or not. So this is a simple application where I have introduced a file source, goes to decode bin, then does a audio video convert and aut automatically uh, syncs to a auto video sync. This is one for only video, and the second one is for only uh, uh, so with uh, audio and video. So if I have to run this one, so let's do it audio, then audio and video. So not here. So this is the same command. So this is how it's playing right now. So I play the file with the same command uh, on the command line. Right. 
So now, it's going back. So how about now we, have, if we want to do this on a uh, Python? The same command that I wrote and we stream it out, we want to do it on a Python. Um, so same step uh, as we did our GTK. Uh, we're going to import GI at the beginning. We are, we're going to say which version it is uh, that we want for GST in this case. And now we import GST. Uh, I don't think we need glib. Um, yeah, we need glib for this one because we want to run a main loop. Uh, we also need to import glib. And then we're going to initialize the uh, GST, saying GST in it. Now we can start creating the, uh, creating the uh, variables. So we need a location what, where, to pay, uh, where to get the file from. We need to define the pipeline, the, the pipeline I talked about. Uh, we're going to watch the pipeline to see if any message has been sent to the pipeline or not. Then gonna, we're going to start the main loop, which is the uh, main loop for uh, G objects or the glib. Um, then we're going to watch the uh, bus for any signals that have been emitted to a bus. Um, so if any signal is emitted, we're going to look at the callback messages. So this is how we create our elements on the, on the Python for GStreamer. Um, so I'm creating file source, I'm creating decode bin, I'm creating video convert to convert it, uh, and so on and so forth. I didn't have everything in here because uh, it's the same process of creating um, other elements. Uh, once the elements are being created, um, we check for whether the elements were, uh, were actually been any non-type or not uh, to avoid any uh, exception. Um, so after that, we, uh, we uh, set the properties if anything needs to be added. For example, for the uh, file source, we need to tell where the file is or where the file source location is. So we set the properties for the file, file location to be the file source. And uh, for decode bin, uh, we need to call a callback message for pad added because every time when the, how the decode bin works is when the uh, stream is available for the decoder, um, the pads are only available. Pads meaning this, the source pads are only available when the data is available. So we need a callback for that one to make a connection, uh, connection when the data is available. Once that's been done, now we are adding all these elements to our pipeline. And once, the, uh, once we add it to the pipeline, now, now we need to link all these elements to each other. So file source to decode bin, as I uh, showed in a previous example, uh, like here, file source to decode bin. So whatever we did on the command line, we are doing in a, uh, in, a, uh, in a Python code. So, so, on and so on and so forth with file source decode bin, decode bin with a video convert, and so on. Um, so this is a callback for decode bin pad when the buffer is, is available for the decode bin. Um, so once the pad is added, we query it to the pad, whether the pad is video or audio. If it's video, we are connecting it to the video pad, uh, video pad of the video sync pad. If it's audio, we are connecting the uh, sync pad of the audio. And this is a callback message, how we're going to uh, uh, look into it. Uh, call, this is a callback message, uh, how it's, it's going to get it. So we're going to get hit this callback message every time there is a message being forwarded on a bus. So we are keeping track of it. Like for example, this, this, this is important for like in case of buffering. If there is some network issue on a, uh, on a streaming, and we have some issue then with the help of uh, message type buffering, we can reset the uh, running time of the pipeline and present some information to the um, um, user. Um, and this is, um, so one thing to note here is uh, once everything been added to a pipeline, the pipeline needs to be set to the state playing um, because it, the GStream has uh, four different states ready, pause, uh, null, and playing. So ready is uh, when it's pre-rolling it, uh, pause is when it's not playing the pipeline, playing is when it's playing is, null is a very uh, first state. Um, so yeah. So if you look at uh, the code here, the whole this code, this is how it looks like uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the pipeline diagram. So you have a file source. We have decode bin. Decode bin has two paths. One goes to the audio convert, another goes to the video convert. Video convert links to the auto video sync, audio convert links to the auto audio sync. So if we have to run this one uh, in a Python code, so we have with audio, yeah, this is the one. Run it. Yeah. 
So the B for example was with the CLI command, now this is with the uh, Python code. The exact same thing, no difference, uh, but this is in a Python code. But again, we cannot use CLI command because it's just for testing purposes. Um, uh, with, the, with the Python, there are other complex things that we could do, uh, like uh, changing the elements dynamically, uh, switching the source elements on a fly and the stuff. Um, the GST tool is only for the, uh, uh, only for the uh, testing purposes, not for the building an application on a production uh, environment. So now we're gonna talk about another example in Python. Uh, yeah. So this is a pipeline that looks complicated initially, but we are going to run. This is what's happening is we are getting a, one video source, which will be my screen, um, and we're gonna send it to the queue, video convert, I wanna scale it to 720p, and then eventually send it to the compositor. We're gonna get all the video source, which will be my web camera, and also send it to the queue, video convert, and send it to the compositor. I'm gonna overlay one picture on top of another picture, and convert it to the S264 encoding, and stream it out to Facebook, YouTube, uh, my own custom uh, media server, and locally to a MP4 file. So this is how a bare minimum pipeline looks like, but it is, doesn't have to be same the way that I had created this pipeline. Um, it could be a different pipeline depending upon the requirement. Um, so we'll look at that one. So first we look at the, what do we need as a source? We need screen capture source. We need, we, so with my Mac, it comes as AV video codec source as a plugin. We use that one for audio, OSX audio source uh, for my uh, capture. And for cam capture, again, a a AVF video source. That's what's uh, available for Mac. Then we um, create for the encoders. So for encoders, we need, uh, we need to convert the raw, uh, raw video frames to S264. Then we have to streaming, it, we are streaming it out to the RTMP. So we need some kind of moksha. So it has to be a FLB moksha in this case. If there is something else, uh, other, any other con container that we want to stream, that mocks needs to be there, which is basically um, moxing two different, uh, or multiple different uh, audio video stream in one. And we need a sync element, which is, in our case, is RTMP sync for Facebook, uh, YouTube, and uh, my custom media server, and uh, file sync for recording it locally. So we need some parameter to be set. So for screen capture, I'm capturing capture screen to be true, uh, and also I want the cursor on there. For audio source, I'm saying, okay, device uh, 189, which is my microphone over here on my computer. Um, and for camera, it's the device index zero, which is my uh, Mac camera over here to capture it. So for the caps filter, I'm saying, okay, make this video to be 720p. Um, I need this caps filter over here because uh, um, I already included video rate, video scale, and video convert over there, which looks at, this, at that cap during uh, preloading to uh, uh, set that format. Um, so when I, when I get this data on the compositor, I'm, I'm setting the compositor uh, one of the pad to be a minimum size so that uh, it won't eat up the whole screen by my um, cam feed so, so I, that I can super, superimpose between one, one screen on top of another screen. And I'm setting as alpha to be 0 0.5 to see how it looks like. So these are some of my encoder settings that I'm setting. Uh, it doesn't have to be same settings, depend upon uh, requirement, it needs to be it can be tuned. So if you look at the GStreamer plugin itself in that element, it has different properties. I'm not really using all the properties. I'm only using the one that I need. Um, and these are the RTMP sync properties uh, that I have right now for my uh, Facebook, YouTube, uh, and for local system capturing. So let's see that one real quick. So that would be this file. So I'm streaming in three different locations here. Um, to bring up my... Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so this is my custom uh, streaming server that I have, which I'm streaming right now. Uh, this is live, should be. And uh, this is YouTube. I'm not live, but uh, I'm still streaming on the YouTube. Uh, there is audio coming in on the YouTube. And this is Facebook, which is all still streaming on the Facebook as well. So with this, uh, um, we can stream directly to three different platforms. Uh, let me stop this one. Again, there are so many things to talk about G streamer. I think 30 minutes is not good enough. I'm just trying to talk on a high, very high level thing here. Um, So uh, if you guys are interested on the GStreamer, uh, they have upcoming 10th uh, GStreamer conference in 2019, which in uh, uh, Lyon, France. Um, and uh, they are, it's, uh, it's right after the embedded Linux uh, conference in Europe. Uh, and uh, th this is their uh, uh, conference uh, link. Um, these are the resources, some uh, helpful resources for uh, uh, Python with GStreamer. Um, um, you can find some examples with the GST Python, how to use it, uh, if you guys are interested on, uh, more on the, on the Python side of it. Uh, but these are mostly uh, about Py objects, G objects, how to uh, build with the GStreamer with the Python, and some examples with the, with the Python. And uh, the last one has a very good example of how to create a custom uh, player uh, with GStreamer. So you can have your own VLC kind of player with a GStreamer. Um, that one has an example. Um, I think that's it. Thank you for your time.